presence. Thank you for what you are about to do in our lives. We exalt you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Wherever you are, just begin to pray, begin to talk to the Lord. The presence of the Lord is so strong here. He's about to do a new thing in your life. Today is your day of visitation. It will be an encounter with the power of the Holy Spirit. Just begin to thank God, begin to thank Him, begin to thank Him. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. Holy Spirit, we welcome 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 you. We ask, oh God, that you do a new thing in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for the presence of your anointing. The anointing removes every yoke. It destroys every yoke. And removes every burden. Let today be the beginning of a new day for someone. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, we thank God for what He is doing. We thank God for His presence. Let's please be seated in the presence of the Lord. You're welcome to day two of the prophetic encounter. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you from across the world, wherever you are watching from. We thank God for your life. We ask that God will do exploits in your life in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you to invite someone to come and watch with you. And I know that your life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to just a quick reminder about uh, our Young Pastors Conference which is coming up on the 27th of June, the Young Pastors Conference, which is coming up on the, on the 27th of June. Uh, please register if you know of any pastor that needs to, to be helped, that, that, that wants to acquire new knowledge. Uh, encourage them to join in. They will be blessed. It is a free conference. And it's on the 27th of June, and the time is from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. British summer time. We've put it at that time so that we can have people from all over the world able to partake of this great conference. It is the first one, and it will be life transforming in the mighty name of Jesus. And also, uh, we are preparing for. Uh, Covenant 2020 uh, towards the middle of this month will engage in a 40 days of prayer and fasting. I want to encourage all of you to start preparing yourself. Uh, we'll be fasting and trusting God to do something unusual in our lives. Uh, every covenant we see God do exploit. So I want you to start preparing your heart and getting ready because this covenant is your covenant. And the theme for this year's covenant is our dominion mandate. So you'll begin to experience what God has called you for from henceforth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank God for what he's doing. Uh, yesterday we started the prophetic encounter and God did some amazing things. Uh, and I believe that many of you have been blessed. We thank God for what he's about to do in your life. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 6 verse 1 and 2, it says, Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he will heal us. Amen. He has stricken he will bind us up Glory. after two days he will revive us Hallelujah. so today is somebody's day Hallelujah. today is your day of Amen. revival Amen. 
the Bible says after two days mm. he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up again mm. so tomorrow is the last day and tomorrow is everybody's day the last day is everybody's day so get ready because God is about to do some great things in your life in the name of Jesus amen, amen. well are you ready for the word Okay, if you are ready, turn with me please in your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. Our foundational text for this uh, prophetic encounter. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. I read, the Bible says, And now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and your father's house to the land that I, the Lord, will show you. And God says, I will make, a, make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing my God. And God says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. Let's look at our key verse again, which is verse 3. God says, I will bless those who bless you, and I, Jehovah, I will curse those who curse you. Now, this is the platform for which curses are dealt with. When somebody curses you, you don't ignore it. You curse the curse back. God says, I, Jehovah, I will curse anyone who curses you. Do you see how it works? God says, I will curse him that curses you. If you believe in the blessing, if you believe that there's an existence of the blessing, then you must also know that there is an existence of curses. Curses are real, whether you believe it or not, they are real. And tonight, I am going to open your eyes into some deep truths that the Holy Spirit showed me. And I want you to get ready because your life will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. So I'm continuing with my message that I started yesterday titled Curse the Curse. Curse the Curse and this is part two. Curse the Curse and this is part two. Quick question we want to ask before we go any further is what is a curse? What is a curse? A curse is a negative word Release to empower you to fail. A curse is a negative word. Release to empower you to fail. Number two, a curse is a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone or something. Hallelujah. A curse is a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone or on something. So, curses are real and curses are operating. Whether you know it or not, curses are operating in geographical locations. Cases are operating in families. Cases are operating in nations and so on and so forth. So cases are real. Listen, even though God has promised to curse everyone that curses you, according to Genesis chapter 12 verse 3, God says, I will curse him who curses you. So that is a promise made to us by God. So even though God has promised to curse everyone that curses you, you also have a responsibility to condemn every tongue that rises up against you in judgment. 
Isaiah chapter 54, verse 15 of verse 17. The 17, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. The Bible says that no weapon of the enemy formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. No weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. Now, this is key. It says, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, it is now your responsibility to condemn, not God's responsibility. God says you shall condemn every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And God says that, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So when people are in secret places and they are releasing cases against you, you have to condemn those cases. So every day when you wake up, begin to condemn the cases. Let me show you something very significant that you have to understand. Every time, every time you begin to walk in the blessing, whether you like it or not, somebody somewhere is cursing you. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, God says, I will bless you. Actually, verse 2, God says, when Abraham, you leave your father's house, you leave your family, you leave everywhere. In verse 2, God says, and I will make you a great nation. God says, I will make you a great nation. Not only that, he said, I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Once you begin to walk in this dimension of blessing, whether you like it or not, you automatically attract curses. Acts chapter 13, verse 44, the Bible says that, and the next Sabbath day, the whole city, the whole city, the whole city came together to hear the word of the Lord. The whole city. And look at what happened next. When the whole city came to hear the word of the Lord. The Bible says that but when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. They were filled with envy. So every time you start walking in the blessing, Every time the blessing begins to make manifest, begin to give a voice in your life, automatically you will attract envy. Automatically you begin to attract envy. The Bible says that when they saw multitudes, the Jews were filled with with envy. Why were they filled with envy? Because now the apostles are beginning or the church now is moving in the dimensions of church flow, not church growth. Church flow. Mm. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2. The Bible says that in the last days the mountain of the Lord's house shall be lifted, shall be risen. Glory be to God shall be lifted above the mountain. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations will flow to it. Do you see that? The moment the church begins to operate in this dimension of nations flowing into us, there is an automatic envy. There is an automatic jealousy where we gather as a church every Sunday when the council sees that we're having a special program and there are multitudes and we, they can't find parking and we park around. They come issuing tickets to us. So every time you walk in the blessing, you'll attract people envying you. You'll attract a curse. Somebody will be in a secret place just trying to curse you. Are you following what I'm saying? Oh, glory be to God. Sorry about the technical noise. Glory be to God. 
something awesome is about to happen tonight and the devil is scared whether he likes it or not this message will be preached hallelujah listen write this down curses don't die curses live on for generations even if the one who proclaimed the curse is dead curses don't die curses live on for generation even if the one who proclaimed the curse is dead this is how jesus puts it in john chapter 6 verse 63 jesus said it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing the words that i speak to you they are spirit and they are life did you see that the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life so that means words carry life for eternity words don't die are you following me words don't die and how are cases released cases are released through words cases are released through what through words so in joshua chapter 6 verse 26 i want to show you something significant that happened in joshua chapter 6 verse 6 the bible says then joshua charged joshua the son of man joshua 6 26 then joshua charged them at that time saying cursed be the man listen carefully cursed be the man before the lord who right who rises up and builds this city jericho he shall lay its foundation with his firstborn and with his youngest he shall set up its gates now you remember yesterday we looked at the book of joshua and we looked at achan when they entered into the 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 city of jericho joshua said specifically nobody should touch the tithe the gold the silver and everything belongs to the treasury of the lord's house and achan disobeyed that instruction and the next thing that happened was a curse came upon achan and achan brought that curse to the whole camp now after that joshua made a curse after the dwarfs of Jericho came down, Joshua made a case. You know how they, they struggled to get into the walls of into Jericho, the city of Jericho, because in Joshua chapter 6, verse 1, the Bible says that the walls, Jericho was tightly shut. Jericho was tightly shut. None could go in, none could come out because of the children of Israel. Are you following me? So after the walls of Jericho came down, after they went around it seven times and it came down, the walls fell flat. Now Joshua put a curse on the walls. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just check if my volume is okay on the on the monitors and it's fine. We really apologize about that crackling noise coming through the live screen stream. The devil is scared. Something unusual is about to break forth today in the mighty name of Jesus. Please pardon the technical bit. We're working on it, and uh, I know that you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. So where are we we are looking at joshua chapter 6 we are looking at joshua chapter 6 verse 26 joshua chapter 6 please let us know wherever you are if you can hear us loud and clear please let us know type in the comment section if you can hear us loud and clear that's fine if not Hallelujah. Praise God. The devil is a liar. We overcome the we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimonies. My God, something strong is coming tonight and I know that your life will never be the same again. So in Joshua chapter 6 verse 26, 
Joshua, after the walls of Jericho came down, he placed a curse upon the real building of the city. And listen carefully. The Bible says that then Joshua charged them at that time. He made a solemn oath. He put a curse on the city. He said, Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds this city Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn and with his youngest he shall set up its gates. Did you see that? Now go with me to 1 Kings chapter 16 verse 34 and let's look at the fulfillment of this case. Even though Joshua is long dead and gone. Are you following me? Even though Joshua is long dead and gone, the, the curse was still in operation. Hallelujah. If I can have a little bit of volume on the mic, please. Joshua was long dead and gone. Dead and gone long ago. But the curse was still working. Why? Because curses don't die. Did you get that? So in 1 Kings chapter 16 verse 34, the Bible says that in his days, Hail of Bethel built Jericho. He laid its foundation with Abiram, his firstborn, and with his youngest son, Segob, he set up its gates according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken through Joshua the son of Nun. Do you see? So many years after Joshua is dead and gone, but the curse that was released that anybody who builds up Jericho is going to build it up, their son is going to die. Their firstborn is going to die. And by the time they get to the building of the gates, their last born is going to die. That's what happened to this king. So curses don't die. Curses lived on from one generation to generation. That's why sometimes if you see curses operating in your life, you were not there when your great grandfathers made a covenant, made an evil covenant with your name on it. Now you have to take on the place of Christ and begin to nullify that, that curse. That's why Isaiah 54 verse 17 says that when there is a tongue, when there is a curse against you, it is your responsibility to condemn it. You have to condemn the curses. Hallelujah. Now, question we want to ask is why must I curse the curse? Why must I curse the curse? Number one, because Satan is not merciful. You must curse the curse because Satan is not merciful. Someone say, oh, but uh, if somebody curses you, it's okay. Just leave them to go. What? God showed us how it is done. God says, I will curse everyone that curses you. So Satan is not merciful. John chapter 10 verse 10. Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So the antidote for every curse is the release of life, is the speaking of life. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 30 to 31. It says, the people do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is starving. Yet, when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. Say amen to that. Amen. He must restore how much? Sevenfold. He may, he may have to give up all the substance of his house. Glory be to God. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I've come to announce to you, just like the children of Israel, there is coming a 430 years restoration into your family. 
There were things that your great great grandfathers worked for. Your generations have worked for. But they were not paid. But in this season you will be paid in the name of Jesus. Amen. There will be a backdated payment into your account. Amen. There will be a backdated payment into your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number two. Why must we curse the curse? Because the strong man has stolen our inheritance. Number two, because the strong man has stolen our inheritance. Luke chapter 11 verse 21 to 22. Luke chapter 11 verse 21 to 22. What does the Bible say? It says, when a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, His goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him, he overcomes him. He takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So that's how we deal with the devil. That's why we curse the curse because the strong man has stolen your inheritance. He's stolen what belongs to you. Your children's inheritance has been stolen by the devil. You don't just look on. If your children's marriage is not going well, you don't just cry. Take a stand. Draw a battle line. If your children are not growing up the way they should grow up, draw a blood line. Begin to take absolute control because God has given you that power. It says, but when a stronger than he comes upon him, he overcomes him, takes from him all his armor, which he trusted in, and he divides his spoil. It's your season. I said it's your season. It is your season. Restoration is coming to your family. In the mighty name of Jesus, every curse that has destroyed your life, that has held you bound, that has caused you to be stagnant, right now in the mighty name of Jesus that curse is destroyed Amen. that curse is cursed in the mighty name of Jesus Mark chapter 3 verse 27 Jesus said no man can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man then he will plunder his house it is time to plunder the house of the devil Mark chapter 3 verse 27. It is time to plunder. And how do we plunder his house? We plunder his house through prayer and fasting. We plunder his house by engaging the mystery of the blood. The blood of Jesus, the Bible says, speaks better things than the blood of bulls and the blood of Abel. It is time to engage God like never before. Why do we curse the curse? Number three, because there are people hired in secret places to curse you. People are hired in secret places to curse you. Numbers chapter 22 verse 6. Whether you like it or not, people have been hired. Your pictures are being taken to some secret places. Your name is being taken to some secret places. They are releasing curses upon you you don't keep quiet you also condemn those curses you curse those curses now don't don't we are not fighting with flesh and blood are you following what i'm saying when we talk about dealing with curses we are not talking about the people we are talking about the spirit behind those people so numbers 22 verse 6 the bible says that therefore this is balak engaging balam he said therefore please come at once curse these people for me for they are too mighty for me because I perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that whom you bless is blessed and whoever you curse is cursed. Do you see? I told you that every time you are walking in the blessing, you automatically attract a curse. Every time. Now look, Balak said, therefore, please come at once. Curse these people for me. Why? For they are too mighty for me. The only reason why Balak wants the children of Israel cursed is because they were too mighty. 
Acts 13, 44, the next Sabbath day, almost the whole city came. The whole city came to church. And when the whole city came to church, the next verse, verse 45, the Bible says that, and the Jews envied them. They were filled with envy. So don't just be there. You have a nice house. You have a nice car. So you think everybody likes you. You have a good job. So you think everybody likes your face. No, 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 no. The moment you walk in the blessing, you automatically attract a curse from people in secret places. So Balak employed the services of Balaam, paid him a lot of money. A lot of money just to curse. Just to curse God's people. And you have no idea who is hiding in a corner somewhere and cursing you. That's why when you wake up, Isaiah 54 verse 17, it says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Say amen to that. I said, No weapon. For no weapon. Isaiah 54 verse 17. No weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. Somebody shall no weapon. No weapon. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. It's time to condemn every weapon they are forming in secret places. Wherever they have taken your name, which any evil altar they have taken your name to. It's time for us to release the fire of the Holy Ghost to consume that negative altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Numbers 23 verse 23 the Bible says that for there is no sorcery against Jacob nor any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel. Oh what God has done. There is no sorcery. There is no enchantment. There is no divination against Jacob. Hallelujah. They will form it, but it will not work in your life in the name of Jesus. Now, we're going to look at how to break specific cases. How do we break specific cases? Please understand that these things are very, very, very important. These things are very, very important. Now, before we go there, I just want you to understand something very important that there are specific or different types of cases that are operating in the lives of many individuals. And they operate differently in the lives of many people. Now, at this point, we are dealing with a virus which is called the COVID-19 the coronavirus coronavirus didn't just start in December coronavirus has been around for years it's just gone on a, on a spread on a high the Bible says that there is nothing new under the sun so how is it that since even though coronavirus has been around for all these years it didn't manifest the way it's manifesting now that's how cases operate. There are different types of cases and how they operate in the lives of different individuals. So, for instance, there are what there is what I call the case of singleness. You see a lady very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Extremely beautiful. Every man that sees that lady and say, Oh, I wish it's my wife. But that lady will remain single for the rest of her life. Any man that comes close to her backs up. Why? Because there is a case of singleness. Maybe that lady went out with her boyfriend years ago and then they, they, she broke her, his heart and then as a result of that he begins to release negative cases. A case of singleness. That because I can't have you, no one will have you forever. And you wonder what happened. This lady sees somebody start relationship three months the relationship is off six months relationship is off sometimes it is they, they they work so hard get to the point of verge of getting married two three days to the marriage the marriage is called off 
There is also the curse of joblessness. There are some people who can't keep a job. They can't keep one job for six months. They are masters of jumping from one job to another. It's not that they are not competent. It's just that there is something. There is something that, that begins to push them out of that job. They can't keep a job. A case of joblessness. And some people, they try so hard. They have all the qualification, yet they are not getting any form of job. There are people they are more qualified than who are working in those places and they are not getting job. There is also the case of sicknesses and diseases. Cases of sicknesses and diseases. There are some families, all you see is different kinds of sicknesses and diseases. Different kinds of sicknesses and diseases. And you wonder, they go to the best doctors, they have the best practitioners, they go to private hospitals, but that sickness is there. They can't diagnose it because it is not physical. It's a spiritual curse released upon that family. Then there is also the curse of servants of servants. Yesterday we saw that in Genesis chapter 9. When Noah cursed Canaan, Noah said to Canaan, a servant of servants will you be forever there are cases of servants of servants there are some people no matter how hard they work no matter how hard they try they will still be a servant of somebody's servant there are some organizations people who are your bosses you are more qualified than them you have a degree and they don't have no degree they just came out of a, a university two or three days ago and they are your boss yet you finish university you have the degree you have everything you have your master's degree yet you are a servant of servants that's a curse there is also the curse of poverty the curse of poverty the curse of poverty operates no matter how hard you work nothing stays in your hand money doesn't stay in your hand you work so hard you earn a lot of money yet you don't see the money at the end of the month it's called the curse of poverty but today in the name of jesus every curse of poverty is destroyed in the mighty name of jesus every curse of poverty every curse of stagnation it is cursed today in the name of jesus the curse of poverty. You work so hard. You can't buy anything. No asset. Nothing. In the name of Jesus today. That curse is destroyed. I said that curse is destroyed. That curse is nullified. Any curse that is working in your life. Any curse working in the life of your family. Any curse that is ravaging your family. Today those curse come under the judgment of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So there's a curse of poverty. Now we want to look at how to break the curse of poverty. There are so many different cases but we don't have the time for me to be able to teach you everything. So we're going to look at briefly how to break the curse of poverty. Number one, Number one way to break the curse of poverty is honor the word of, the, of God over your circumstances. You have to honor the word of God over your circumstances. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. You have to understand that the, when I talk about honor, I'm talking about weight. Let the word of God be weightier, be heavier than every circumstances that you are going through. So honor the word of God over your circumstances. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. It says, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor and those who despise me shall be lightly 
esteemed. Hallelujah. So God doesn't like people who dishonor. You have to learn to lift God's word above your circumstances. God said, those who honor me, I will honor. Those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. It's time to place God's word above your situation. It is time to honor God above whatever you're going through in the name of Jesus. Number two way to, 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 to deal with the curse of poverty is honor your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Honor your father and your mother. God says, honor your father and your mother and your days shall be long upon the earth which the Lord your God is giving you. See how powerful honor is? God says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the earth or on this earth. That is the only commandment with a blessing. It's time to honor your father. It's time to honor your father. Listen, listen. Dishonoring your mother and father brings curse. It brings curse. You can't dishonor your mother and your father. It doesn't matter what they have done. God never said honor your good mother or honor your good father. Are you following me? It is your responsibility to honor your father. Whether your father is a drunkard or not, you honor him. Whether your mother, excuse my language, is a prostitute or not, you have to honor her because God says, honor your mother and your father, then shall your days be long upon this earth. Glory be to God. So learn to honor. If you want to come out of the curse of poverty, honor your parents. Honor them on a daily basis. Honor them on a weekly basis. Honor them on a monthly basis. Honor them. Don't forget their birthdays. Don't, don't only give them, send them something tiny during Christmas. Are you following me? Some of you can see your parents struggle. They have struggled to put you to school, taking care of you, schooled you, sacrificed. They, they did everything to make sure you have education. Today you have a good job. And you have neglected your parents. That is dishonor. That's not of God. Learn to honor your parents. They are not going to be here forever. Don't let them, after they are dead and gone, then you go and buy the most expensive casket. The most expensive coffin. No. Honor them now. Honor the living. Don't honor the dead. We honor the living. Are you following what I'm saying? I remember when I was going to school, my mother has to, I mean, sacrifice. My mother didn't go to school. My mother was an illiterate. She couldn't speak English. But my mother wanted to make sure myself and my, my junior sister, who are the last two, to make sure that we have the best education. My mother was a petty trader and she took me to a private school. That's how determined she was. She has never been to school before, but she was able to sponsor me to go to a private school. Are you following me? And when it came to the time where I was going to write my final exams, my GCE o level ent entrance exams, I had no money and they, I was owing school fees. And they came to kick me out of the exams hall. My mother has to take her last capital her capital to pay for my fees. Why do you think I will not honor this woman who sacrificed everything for me? Don't honor the dead. Honor the living. Are you following what I'm saying? Honor the living. Honor your parents. Honor them. There must be a budget from your salary that must go to your parents if they are alive on a monthly basis. Glory be to God. Number three way of coming against the, the curse of poverty is believe in your prophet. Number three, believe in your prophet. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. The Bible says that, And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear, O Judah, 
and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Listen, God doesn't prosper you. God establishes you. God uses his prophets sent by him to prosper you. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. Are you following what I'm saying? So learn to honor and believe in your prophet. Believe in the set man of God over your life. Believe in his ministry. Believe that God has called him to prosper you. So learn to believe in the prophets that God has assigned to you. Are you following what I'm saying? You want to break the curse of poverty? It comes through your prophet. Believe in your prophets and you shall prosper. Believe in your prophets and you shall prosper. Mary said unto angel Gabriel, What you have said unto me, I don't know how it's going to be. But one thing I know, be it unto me according to your word. I don't understand what is happening, but I believe it. I believe that your word is true. So learn to believe in the words of your prophet. Believe in your prophet. As I'm declaring God's word, believe that God has sent me to give you this word to cause you to prosper. Therefore, on the basis of God's word, I decree that none shall die poor in this family. I say none shall die poor in this family. In the mighty name of Jesus, in this commission, in this ministry, in this family that God has called us into, there is no member of this church that will die a pauper. The least every member of Solution which sent Chapel International will die as is a, a millionaire. The least you will die as at your very old age, a good old age, the least you will die at is a millionaire. And I'm not talking about a, a Naira millionaire or a CD millionaire or a, a Rand millionaire. I'm talking about a pound millionaire. Glory be to God. God gives us genuine prophets to help us to prosper here on earth. Listen, your prophet is to help you to profit in life. So honor the anointing that is upon him. Honor the anointing that God has given him to prosper you in Jesus' name. Number four, honor your prophet. Now, there's one thing to believe in your prophet and there's another thing to honor your prophet. Number three is you believe in your prophet. Number four is you honor your prophet. Philippians chapter four from verse 15 to 19. Are you getting something out of this? Philippians chapter 4 from verse 15 to 19. This is Paul speaking. Paul said, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessity. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full and having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma an acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to God so because of all of this Paul the great prophet said my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus hallelujah so learn to honor your prophet Learn to honor your prophet. Look at verse 18 again. Verse 18 of Philippians chapter 4. Paul said, Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, 
having received from Epaphroditus the things you send from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. That's how you honor your prophet. You honor him with a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice uh, that is well pleasing to God. You don't just throw something. No. You don't just th listen, listen, listen. Your level of honor determines the level of blessing that is released to you. Paul said, I am teaching you this concerning giving and receiving. Jesus even said, give and it shall be given unto you. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. So I want you to understand that when it comes to giving, you're not giving for for the betterment of your man of God or your prophet, but rather it, it is to your account. Every time you give, God measures it back to you in a good measure, in pressed down measure, shaken together, and he pour it back onto you in the mighty name of Jesus. I see you overcoming the curse of poverty. I see you overcoming the curse of poverty in the mighty name of Jesus. I see you from today flourishing, going over and above every situation that you find yourself in. Some of you are going to be buying houses, real estates, cash. Some of you are going to be from today, God is changing your status. God is changing your situation. God is turning that bitterness into sweetness in the mighty name of of Jesus. Number five way of destroying the curse of poverty, breaking the curse of poverty is honor God. Honor God. Number one is you honor the word of God over your circumstances. Number two, you honor your father and your mother. Number three, you believe in your prophet. Number four, you honor your prophet. Number five, you honor God. Number five, you honor God. Now, I'm not teaching you these things because I need anything from you. Those who can attest to the fact that these things that I'm teaching work knows there are men and women in this church faithful, faithful, understand honor honoring us, honoring my wife and I from time to time on a consistent basis. Just this week, a couple in the church doing extremely well. God is flourishing their business. Just sent a huge seed to say we want to honor our man of God. Not that I need it, but it is to their account. Are you following what I'm saying? Do you think that God is not going to bless this family? over and above and beyond no gates of hell can be shut against this family because they understand that, that the anointing you honor is the anointing that blesses you so number five is you honor God number five you honor God second Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6 to 11 second Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6 to 11 I trust that God is blessing you it's my prayer that God will lift you up. It's my prayer that this prophetic encounter will mark you for life. From today, God is changing your status. God is marking you for profit. God is marking you for prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6, the Bible says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap how sparingly. He who sows bountifully shall also reap how bountifully. Now, I, I shared with you the last time that sowing sparingly means sowing, sowing in an infrequent, restricted, limited manner. And when you sow like that, you also reap in a limited, infrequent, and in a small manner. But when you sow bountifully, 
Sowing bountiful means sowing in abundance. When you sow bountifully, guess what? You reap how bountifully. Verse 7, the Bible says, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Listen to that. Very important. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. That means nobody must put pressure on you to give. Your giving must come out of a cheerful heart. Are you following me? Verse 8, the Bible says that, and God, when you do verse 7 and verse, when you do verse 6 and verse 7, verse 8 becomes your portion. It says, then God is able to make all grace, not some grace, all grace abound to you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Verse 9, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Now, verse 10, he that ministers seed, he that ministers, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food shall so supply and multiply. Supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Hallelujah. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us, to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You are blessed. God will honor you this day. God will lift you up this day. In the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. It says honor the Lord with your substance. Honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Say amen to that. Amen. It's your season to experience the overflow. It is your season to experience the overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, as we get ready to close, how do we break specific cases? How do you break specific cases? There are four ways I'm going to show you that is so important that I need you to listen. Listen carefully because this will transform your life forever. How do you break specific cases? Now, when I talk about specific cases, remember yesterday I said to you that to be able to identify the presence of cases, you have to examine yourself extensively. Do uh, an, uh, 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 an extensive examination and check your life. Check your life. When you check your life, you begin to see patterns. You begin to see family patterns. You begin to see failures in your family. And once you see those failures, what do you do? You begin to deal with them specifically. So how do we break specific cases in our lives? And this can apply to any area of cases that you see operating in your life. Number one, engage the mystery of the prayer altar. Number one, engage the mystery of the prayer altar. Or engage the mystery of prayer and fasting. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6 to 8. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6 to 8. So number one is you engage the mystery of prayer and fasting. God says, is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bonds of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is, not, is it not to share your bread? with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh 
when you do this, God said, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing will spring forth. Your healing, the curse will, the healing for your that curse will spring forth, shall spring forth out speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Hallelujah. So engage the mystery of prayer and fasting. Jesus said in Matthew 17, 21, Jesus said, How, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So engage the mystery of prayer and fasting. If you see any form of curse in your life, take time. Go on a three-day fast. Go on a seven-day fast. Go on a 21-day fast. Depending on the level of the curse, go on that level of fast. Go on a 40-day fast. Are you following me? Fast until that curse is broken in your life and in the life of your children. I remember my wife and I, before we got married, when we started courting, we started dealing with generational curses in our bloodline. I knew I had some generational curses in my father's bloodline, in my mother's bloodline, and I didn't want to bring this into this marriage. So every Thursday, for as long as we were courting, every Thursday was our day of prayer and fasting. And dealing with these curses, binding them, destroying them, casting them out. And to God be all the glory, I'm the only one in, in the entire family, in my entire family, who by the grace of God has gone through the proper channel of marriage. The only one, the only one. My father married four wives, plus those who come and go. Almost all my brothers, everyone have one, two, three, four. Some try to beat my father's record. In our family, in the women's side, nobody gets married properly. You can't see these things happening in your family and just leave it. You have to engage the mystery of prayer and fasting. That's why Jesus said this kind. This kind of curse that is ravaging your family, it doesn't come out except by prayer and fasting. You can't be eating every day and make your belly, your, your tummy as your God and not engage the mystery of prayer and fasting and think you'll be able to overcome that curse. No. So right now, I pray that God will give you grace. Grace to engage in that mystery. Grace to engage the altar of prayer and fasting on a consistent basis. And as you do that, that curse will be broken. That's why this week, we have taken this week to fast and to pray. Are you following me? Number two, engage the mystery of the anointing. Number two, engage the mystery of the anointing. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 it says and it shall come to pass on that day that the burden his burden this his burden that that his burden will be taken from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing say amen to that and the yoke will be destroyed because of what the anointing so learn to engage the mystery of the anointing as 1038 the bible says that how jesus christ of nazareth how how god anointed jesus christ of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good healing all that were oppressed by the devil through curses for god was with him so it takes the anointing to overpower curses it takes the anointing of god to break the yoke of curses and today I release that anointing into your family to demolish every everlasting mountain, every perpetual mountain that has been destroying your family. That curse comes to an end today in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 105 from verse 13 to 15. It says, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, 
He permitted no one to do them wrong. I love that. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sakes. Why is that? Verse 15 is key. Saying, do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Hallelujah. Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Psalm 89 from verse 20 to 23. God said, I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him with whom my hand shall be established also. My arm shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact or outwit him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague those who hate him. Hallelujah. So from today, every curse that has hated you and your family, God is plaguing it. In the mighty name of Jesus. By the reason of the anointing. Every case of singleness. Every case of divorce. Every case of waywardness. Every case of foolishness. Every case of poverty. They are destroyed today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number three. Engage the mystery of the spirit of faith. How do we deal with specific cases? Number one. Engage the mystery of prayer and fasting. Number two, engage the mystery of the anointing. Number three, engage the mystery of the spirit of faith. Engage the mystery of the spirit of faith. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 13. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 13. The Bible says that, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. So you see how the spirit of faith operates? It says, and since we have what? The same, same spirit of faith. Same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we speak. So how does faith operate? The spirit of faith operates this way. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. By it, by what? By faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. So that means when you engage the spirit of faith, the spirit of faith changes every bad testimony to a good testimony. Verse 3, the Bible says that by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which were seen were not made out of the things which were visible. So engage the spirit of faith. Let's look at how God did this in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. The Bible says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 is key. The Bible says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's, that's curse right there. That's the, the existence of curse operating in what God has created. God created the earth, the heavens and the earth, and the Bible says that, And the earth was without form and void. Tohu and bohu. And darkness and curses was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3, the Bible says that, And God said, Let there be light. You see how you frame your world with faith? And God said, Let there be light. Light there represents blessing. And there was light. Darkness represents Cases. Light represents blessing. God said, let there be light and there was light. God said, let there be light and there was light. And the Bible says, and God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Glory be to God. So engage the mystery of the spirit of faith. Speak the faith. Speak the word of faith. 
when you see any curse operating in your life, begin to release the spirit of faith. Begin to declare, I shall not die. I shall live to declare the glory of God. I will not be the tail. I will be the head. I am blessed and not cursed. That is how the spirit of faith is released. The spirit of faith is released. God saw darkness. God saw curses. God didn't keep quiet. God released the spirit of faith. God started framing his world with his word. Hallelujah. Number four. The last but not the least. Number four. Way of breaking and dealing with specific cases is engage the mystery of the altar. Engage the mystery of the altar. Genesis chapter 35 verse 1. Genesis chapter 35 verse 1. The Bible says that then God said to Jacob arise go up to Bethel. Oh my God. Bethel represents the house of God. God said, Arise and go to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar to God. This is key. And make an altar to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of your brother Esau. Do you see? Just the verse 1 is key. The verse 1, God said, Make me an altar. Lay an altar. Have an altar for God. God said, arise, go to Bethel. Bethel represents a house of bread. Bethel represents the presence of God. Bethel represents the house of God. Bethel represents the place where you are fed with the bread. You are fed with revelation. Right now, you are being fed with the word. And as you are being fed with the word, you dwell by the word. God said, dwell there. When you find the word, be like a sheep. Stay on that grass. Eat the grass. Chew the grass. Keep eating. And as you keep eating, you keep growing. As I'm feeding you right now, some curses in your family are being dissolved. There are curses that have chased you for years that have been cancelled now. Why? Because the word of the Lord is going forth. And every time the word of God is going forth, the word is framing. It's framing things in your life. And in the name of Jesus, I decree that the altar of God will speak for you today. God said, and make an altar to God there. Make an altar to God. Now why was God demanding an altar? Because an altar is a place where God meets with man. An altar is a place. Now this is an altar. I'm speaking for, to you today from this altar. And this altar is a place of testimonies. This altar is a place of transformation. This altar is a place of transfiguration. This altar is a place of blessing. This altar is a place where curses are demolished. So God said, go and raise an altar for me. Unfortunately, many believers in this century don't understand altars. And for your information, when your enemies, uh, the wicked ones, are taking you to, to, to be cursed, they take you to altars. But they take you to the wrong altars. And listen to me, write this down. Every altar, the strength of an altar is determined by the sacrifice that is made on that altar. The strength of an altar is determined by the sacrifices that are made on that altar. So to engage the mystery of the altar, you have to learn to do make sacrifices. What is a sacrifice? A sacrifice is anything that costs you. You can rear an altar in your house. In your house, an altar and say, every 3 a.m. I'll wake up. It's costing you something. I'll wake up and pray for seven days. To demolish this curse. This curse in my family. This curse that is destroying the women. This curse that is destroying the children. This curse that everyone that rises their head up. They come against them. This curse must die. This curse must be demolished. This curse must be overpowered. Give yourself three days. Seven days. One week. Two weeks. One month. 
and deal with that curse. Don't allow that curse to destroy your family. Finally, Genesis chapter 32 from verse 24 to 31. We are going to look at how Jacob engaged the mystery of the altar. Genesis chapter 20, 32, sorry. Genesis chapter 32 from verse 24 to 31. The Bible says that then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him or an angel of the Lord wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of it of his joint and he wrestled with him you see how you deal with altars you wrestle with the altar until you get your answer you don't let go the bible says that and he wrestled with him he wrestled with him he wrestled with god he wrestled with god until his change come the Bible says that, the next verse, verse 26, the Bible says that, and he said, let me go. The angel of the Lord is saying to Jacob, let me go for the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Unless you change my name from a curse to blessing. Unless you change this curse situation, I will not let you go. That must be your attitude. That's why you have to engage the mystery of the altar. So the Bible says that he said to him, what is your name? And Jacob said, my name is Jacob. My name is Kes. My name represents a Kes. My name represents a supplanter. My name represents a deceiver. All my life I have been a supplanter. All my life I have been a deceiver. It's a Kes that keeps following me. I don't know where it came from, but unfortunately it keeps following me. You see, when you engage the altar, you have to be real with God. You have to be real with God. That is not the time to pretend. You have to let God know the kind of curses that is ravaging your family. The Bible says, and God said to him, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and you have prevailed. Hallelujah. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray thee. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. Glory be to God. He blessed him there. Verse 31 is powerful. The Bible says that just as Jacob crossed over Penuel, the sun rose on him. That represents a new page. He's moved from a curse into a blessing. I pray over you today that the sun will rise over you. I prophesy over you today you are crossing from curses into blessings. You are crossing from curses into blessings. You are crossing from curses into blessings in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now we've come to the end of the service. My God, my God, I believe that wherever you are, the presence of God is, is so strong where you are. Now we are going to partake of the communion. But before we partake of the communion, I am going to lead you to pray. You have to give your life to Christ. If you are not born again, you are still under the curse of bondage. It's time to give your life to Christ. Wherever you are, you are watching this. Some of you were watching some very evil things and by the grace of God you just came here. You didn't come here by an accident. Some of you were doing other things which were not of God and you just found yourself here. And you have, been, you have stayed on here till now. You are not watching by accident. The spirit of God brought you here. So I want to lead you to Christ. Say with me Lord Jesus. I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, I have decided to serve you. And no turning back in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we want to partake of the communion. 
And then after the communion, we're going to take time to pray. The Bible says that on the last day, Jesus took bread. And after he had broken it, he gave thanks and said, this is my body. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Now this is the flesh of Jesus. It's the body of Jesus. As you partake of this body, this bread today, it represents all the lashes Jesus took on the cross to destroy every curse. Every curse that has been in your body. Curse of sicknesses and diseases. Curses of poverty. Curses of depression. They will be destroyed today. Every form of generational curses that has operated in you and your family's life, they will be destroyed today. In the mighty name of Jesus. So the body of Christ, wherever you are, take and eat. The same way the Bible says he took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he had given thanks. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you do it. Do it in remembrance of me. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus speaks better things. As you partake of this cup today, better things will begin to speak in your life. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus take and drink. Now we're going to pray. There's a scripture I want us to pray on. Lamentations chapter 5 verse 7. Lamentations chapter 5 verse 7. It says, Our fathers sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. This is not right. Our fathers sins and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. That is a curse. We are going to break this curse. We are going to break the curse. They are no more. They cannot transfer their curses onto us. Every generational curse is being broken now. Now begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to curse them. Begin to curse the curse. Begin to curse the curse. Curse every curse. In your family. In your families. In your family. Begin to curse it. Begin to curse it. This is not a time for joking. This is not the time for joking. Curse the curse. Curse the curse. Curse it. Every curse. Curse it now. Curse it now. Destroy their works. Destroy their works. Destroy their works. Apply the blood of Jesus over you. Every curse of sickness. Every curse of servanthood is destroyed now. We come against them. We come against them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Curse the curse. Curse the curse. Curse the curse. Cares the curse, cares the curse, cares it, cares it, cares it, cares it. Don't stop, cares it. Engage the altar, engage the mystery of prayer and fasting. Cares the curse, cares it now, cares it now, cares, cares them, cares them. Wherever they've taken your name, wherever they've taken your marriage, any negative altar, we cares them. We care them. We curse them. We walk in the blessing. We walk in the blessing. Our fathers have seen and are no more. We will not bear their iniquities. We will not bear their iniquities. We will not bear their iniquities. We curse the curse. We walk in the blessing. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. It is done. Father, thank you for everyone that is watching from across the world. Anyone that has worked in any form of curses. We turn the curses into blessings now. We give you praise. Thank you for answers to our prayers. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. And amen. Well, we've come to the end of the service. This is day two. Tomorrow is the last day. Don't miss it tomorrow. Starting at the same time. Half seven.